Hi everyone, so welcome to the APM tutorial session 2. In this tutorial, we will be looking on to setting up our APM in our local machines. I am using Windows 10 for myself. And along with that, you will also be seeing the different tools and packages we need to install to proceed with our mobile network and testing using APM. So let's see the agenda for today. So for APM setup, we will be needing a Java SDK. Uh, and Java after uh, that, Java path need to be there. We will uh, look into it later, and we also need the Selenium web driver, and uh, we also be needing the test engine J unit in a test framework, okay, to proceed with our executions. We will need Eclipse or IntelliJ IDEA or uh, whatever the Java ID is there. If you go, if you wanna go for another language, you can choose another ID, okay. And the Node.js server that is one of the important parts. Node.js server that need to be installed for APM. Node.js is an open source server framework, so it will allow to run your JavaScript on the server. Okay, so apart from it, you will need the APM Java client jar file, and you also need the APM server and the PDA net, PDA net for uh, USB and Bluetooth tethering process. And when you will be carrying our test for uh, automation, so we'll be, we need to have our device on the debug mode, USB debugging mode. So uh, for tethering, we will be using the PDA net versions. Android SDK. So, if you want to execute, I mean, if you want to go with uh, Android automation testing, you should have installed the Android SDK in your uh, local machine. And apart from that, we will be using the Geni machines for emulator. And for Geni machine user, we will be needing one more software, Oracle Virtual Box, should need to be installed in your machine so that it can smoothly start the Geni machine. Okay. Another thing, if you want a real device, so you should have the Team VR or the Movies and Mirroring, whatever is preferred, should have installed in the machine. Hardware Accelerated Execution Manager stand for HXM need to be installed in the machine. Basically, it's a feature will be provided by the Android SDK Manager itself, but uh, in the current SDK versions, it is not supported. So it's rather uh, better to download these packages from the website itself and install in your local machines if you want to set up the emulator from your Android SDK. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, I, for myself, I have downloaded all the packages in my local folder. Uh, I'm showing you guys. Okay, so for hardware accelerated execution manager, I have uh, download and I will install this later. I have already installed this already. And Android installer for in Android SDK packages, I have downloaded. APM server desktop setup client, I have downloaded. Geni motions uh, for emulator, I have downloaded. Java client version 2, I have downloaded two options, but better to go with the latest versions. So, Java client 5.0.0, beta 9, I will be using. Mobigen mirroring or team VR, anyone you should choose. For myself, I will be using the Mobigen. Node.js server, I have downloaded. And PDNN version and Oracle virtual box, I have downloaded. So, now let me show you, I mean, how to download this feature. So, for Android uh, SDK file, if you search on the Google Android SDK download, you will be having some options to download Android SDK. Studio and SDK tools. So if you click on the first page, first link, it will take you to the Android Studio website. Okay. Inside that options, make sure you click checking the download options. Okay. Click on the download option, you will be seeing that for Windows 64 bit, Windows 32 bit, and Mac option, it's showing Android Studio packages. I am not uh, going to download the Android ID integrated development environment. I only need the Android SDK files. So I'll be only downloading the uh, SDK tools only. Okay, so if you want to download this uh, Android ID, Android Studio itself, then you can download this file. So for my set, I'll be only needing the Android SDK. So I'll be downloading the SDK tools for Windows. It's around 132 MB, so you can easily download it. Apart from that, if you Node.js server, that is one of the important feature of the APM, and which I told you that uh, it's an open source server framework that allow you to run JavaScript on the server. So how can download it? Just search on the Google, you will get the Node.js download. The click on the download Node.js, it will take you to the Node.js website pages. Now, for choose for which one you want to use for Windows installer 64 bit, and accordingly, you can go with the download process. Okay, and same way for uh, if you want to download the Java client library for APM, just open the Maven repository and search the Java client. I can we can see that the Java client in the Maven repository has been listed there. So the latest version is 5.0.9 beta 9. So in case uh, if you are using the Maven for uh, Eclipse, 
Imagine as a building framework, you can directly copy paste the dependency your uh, form XML. Or uh, either in other cases, you can download the jar file. Okay, so I've already downloaded the jar file for Java client in my local machine. You can see that the jar file 256 KB. Okay, next thing is that you need to download the Jenny motions. Uh, for Jenny motions, if you search on the uh, Google, you will get to the Jenny motions link and getting navigated to their website. Will be having some option to download the Jenny versions. From that options, you can download the Jenny versions. Okay, so I have downloaded the Jenny version from the site itself. Uh, let me show you. Right. This is Jenny version virtual box, and if you start on the Jenny version virtual box, it will prompt you to install one more software. That Oracle virtual box you need to install to smooth processing in your emulator. Okay, so why should we gen if prefer Jenny versions emulator? Uh, we can also have the emulator for if you install the Android SDK. It's preferred, uh, universally much preferred is that the Android emulator, Android default emulator in the Android SDK uh, too much slow, okay? it will take too much time to open. And if you are using Jenny version, so it will be much faster, the emulator will be much faster than the other. Okay, next thing is that uh, we already done with these things. And hardware acceleration execution manager, HAXM, HAXM unit download, HAXM. Download so HXM you also need to download. Let me show you guys. Uh, yeah, from the site, it's Intel Hardware Acceleration Execution Manager. From this site, you can download the HXM and you can install in your machine. Okay, so here is my Android SDK file. If you click on that, it will uh, start the installing process. So, for my case, I have already installed it. Uh, so, let me show you to the installation location. Okay, so for my case, I have installed this file Android SDK inside that local C user laptop app data local Android. Okay, uh, let me show you. okay. so inside that folder, uh, this Android SDK has been installed already. And one more thing I would like to mention that if you install the SDK manager uh, this way, it will take around two to three hours time if you want to download the two or three API level. And for my case, I am using the Android API level uh, 23 here for Marshmallow. So it took 30, 31 GB for my case. Okay, so it will take some time around. And if you, it's pref much much preferred if you wanna carry, if you wanna proceed to the testing for some particular uh, API level, so then download only that particular API. I mean, download two or three API. Yeah. Do not download all those API packages. Okay. So it will take, I mean, a huge time for you to proceed. Okay. So after installing this successfully, that Android SDK now you have to configure this in the environment variable. So let me show you. Okay. Now the next step is uh, environment variables we need to set up. So you need to navigate to the edit environment variables platform. Inside that, click on the environment variables. And inside that, you can see that I have created one variable Android Home. For in your case, you need to create a new variable, click on the new button and you need to give the variable name and variable value. So for my case, I created the Android variable name Android Home and value set is a, the path for my Android SDK is installed. See, this path, this path, Android SDK path, the full path I mentioned. See, user laptop, app data, local Android, Android SDK, okay. And the next thing is that you have to provide the Android SDK variable um, into your, mention your path. So Whatever the path has been there in the, under the system variables, click on that edit options. You will see a lot of options has been previously there. For my case, for Maven, Java project, I already said this earlier. And in that case, you have to provide the Android SDK uh, path along with the tools and the platform tools. So you can navigate to my page, yes, Android SDK, you can see there is two folders like tools and platform tools. Okay, so the platform tools and tools you have to provide in the path. So um, this, those things I have already provided in the uh, Android uh, in the path path system variable. And now let me show you. if you provide, if successfully provide the path system variable, and now if you navigate to the um, navigate to the Android SDK folder, now let if you run it, uh, if you run the command from from here, and you put Android, Android, okay. So it will open the Android SDK manager from here. Okay. So first you have to install your Android SDK successfully. Then after successful installations, you have to uh, set up the environment variables for your Android SDK. Okay. So see, I mean, um, 
what I've what I've done, I've just uh, navigated to this particular Android SDK path. I'm on the command prompt. I've given the Android and it's open the Android SDK manager. Inside the manager, uh, you can see that there are lots of options over there, like uh, Android versions, Android 8, 7, 6, uh, lots of versions of there. I mean, extras. Okay. I will prefer you to download all this API. I mean, it's prefer if download only two or three pairs as per record as per your project requirement. For my case, I've already downloaded this uh, Android 6 version API. Okay. It took me around 31 GB and 3 hours to download all these files. Okay, so I'm closing this Android SDK up now. And next important thing is that uh, you need to download the uh, Node.js. So for my case, I have installed the uh, I don't have installed the Node.js because the version earlier, APM versions uh, 1.6.0 version earlier, we only need the APM. Uh, you only have to install the APM via the Node.js uh, command prompt. Okay, now the latest version APM offering the APM GUI desktop versions. For that, you don't need to download the Node.js server. If you're already having that, it's good. So you can also utilize the APM desktop version .exe file directly to create your APM server. Okay, so I will uh, cover this session, all this session uh, in my next tutorial. I mean, how to, how to, how to. Uh, proceed with the mobile application testing using it APM. So another thing is that uh, we are done with the Android uh, installer, the APM desktop. So if you download the APM desktop uh, applications, it will uh, looks like this uh, APM. And it's preferred that if you download and inst install, uh, download and install the Node.js server and launch the APM from itself. But uh, as per the current release, uh, you can also install, I mean, directly access the APM from the exe file and from the icon from this for desktop. In this. Okay. I will share with the command. Uh, okay, so this is my APM server. This APM server by default will host run on 127.0.0.1 and the port will take it as a 4723. Okay. So this is the local server I'll be using, and the current server, the IBM server, I'm using the latest versions, version as a 1.6.5. Okay, so let me close it as of now. So let's have a new look on our setup process. So we have already successfully uh, have set up the uh, APM server, and we have downloaded the. Okay, I need to show you one pg.net. I have downloaded and installed the pg.net also. Uh, currently, there is no has been installed in my device connected to my device so it's showing as off uh, whenever i'm going to connect it will turn as a on and it will give you the usb sharing process okay and if you if i open my clips i also set up yeah for my android uh, yeah, automations project <coughs> it's, it will it's take some time um, system is hanging okay. not responding currently Okay, uh, just navigate to the build path, uh, to the configure build path, under the configure build path, uh, and it, yeah, no automation project, let's see, it's still loading. Okay, so you can see that here we have already added this uh, Java client. Okay, so the Java client jar file that I have downloaded, you need to install your Selenium or whatever uh, library file. Okay. So click on the add external jar, choose the location, whatever the location you have downloaded the Java file and add it to your project. Okay. Okay. So in my next video, I'll be covering about the starting a starting a, I mean uh, writing a simple Android automation project and creating my first phase script in the Android automations using the APM. Okay. So for setup, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. And that's all for today then. Thank you. Thank you for watching.